good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson we'll be carrying on with the topic of functions and today we'll be looking at the parabola specifically on the topic of plotting our parabola. So since our introduction let's get familiar with our equation. So right over here we have y is equal to ax squared plus q. Cool. So, as we know, our x and y in all of our function equations, those are all um, sort of known values because these are coordinates, right? We know that we have coordinates of x and y. So, we know what x and y is in our equation, right? Those are just coordinate placeholders. But when it comes to a and q, which might be new to us now, so let's have a look at what a and q stand for in this equation. So, Cool, the cool thing you need to know about a is that a, if it is greater than zero, then as you can see our probably on the left, it's shaped like a smiley face, right? So if a is greater than zero, our graph looks like the smiley face. Cool. So then moving on now, if a is less than zero, our parabola will look like a sad face. just like that. So as you can see in this case the parabola would have had a greater than zero that's because it's a sm smiley face but if a was less than zero we would have it upside down and showing a sad face over there. Now looking at q. So q over here it, it signifies our y-intercept. Cool. So as you can see here, we have Q which would be over here, right? Because that's our y intercept. That's where the graph passes through the y axis. So the another thing you need to know about Q is that it is also our minimum and our maximum value. Cool. And the reason for that is because, as you can see, it is the turning point of the graph in this case, right? So when the graph, it comes all the way down over here, it reaches Q, it starts to turn around and head back up. So it is our minimum in value in this case, but if we had a sad face, it would be at the top, meaning that it would be our maximum value. Now looking at when it comes to certain type of exam questions where they ask us for the domain of the graph. So domain refers to x values on the graph. Okay, So if they're asking us for the domain of a parabola, we need to know that the answer will always be that x is an element of all real numbers. Okay, So that's how we write it out. x is an element of all real numbers. Why is that? Because a parabola goes on forever, right? And x can be every single value on the graph. x is not limited in any way. So now that we know some basics about our parabola, let's move on to some plotting examples. So the first method we're going to look at with plotting is the table method. So in this example we are given the equation y is equal to 3x squared. Okay, so if we can recall the equation for a parabola, it was y is equal to ax squared plus q. So in this specific example, what we are missing in this case is the q. We have something that is representing a, which is the 3 over here, right? So in examples where we have a q missing, it is most suitable to use the table method. So how are we going to go about doing this now? is we set up a table, x values on the top, y values at the bottom. So our x values, remember because x values are infinite, we can use any values. So we will use a negative 1, 0 and positive 1. Cool. So with table method, you can just stick to these three and it should be okay. So what we do from here to find our y values is to plug these x values into our equation. So first we'll look at um, negative 1 for the x value so we're going to substitute negative 1 in so we'll have let's get a different color for you guys 
y is equal to 3 so in the place of x we'll plug in a negative 1 and that's squared so now we're going to have 3 times so what's negative 1 squared negative 1 squared will give us positive 1 so that's 3 times 1 it gives me 3 cool so just like that we have our y value so now we have our 0 and we know obviously that if we plug 0 into this equation we are going to get 0 cool because there's no add or subtract and because it's all attached here that means that the whole thing will equal to negative because I mean to 0 because anything times or 0 equals 0 moving on we're going to plug our number 1 into the equation so if we just take it here we just remove this negative of here we can see 1 squared gives me 1 and then 1 times 3 gives me 3 cool so now that we have that let's write it out in coordinate form so we have negative 1 and 3 for our first values negative 1 being the x value and 3 being the y value moving on we have 0 and 0 and then we have 1 and 3 so all we need to do now is plot that onto our graph so first thing we can see is that 0 and 0 obviously that uh, that is the coordinates of the origin of our graph right so that's right in the middle over there important thing for us to do is that when we do plot our points we need to identify the points right so this will be point 0 and 0 next we're looking for negative 1 and 3 also guys just before I continue I do want to say that none of this is to scale as I have limited space to work with so just bear with me on that cool so we'll work with negative 1 and positive 3 so we'll say negative 1 is about over here positive 3 is about somewhere over here and so our point negative 1 and 3 will be around that position over there so we'll identify it negative 1 and 3 and then positive 1 and 3 which is our final point we are plotting would be somewhere over there which would be positive 1 and 3 cool so what's going to happen now is we are going to draw our graph in just making sure that we pass through all of our points that we've identified and then just top it off with the arrows over there showing that it goes on infinitely cool so what we did with the table method we used the x values to find the y values by plugging the x value into our equation once we got those we showed what our coordinates were and then we plotted it onto our graphs identifying what our different coordinates were so next up what we are going to do is we are going to look at our intercept method so we've covered the table method which helps us to plot this graph but now we look at the intercept method so the first thing we're always going to want to do is identify what our y-intercept is you can either do the x-intercept way first or the y-intercept I just prefer doing the y-intercept first so let's just tell them what we're looking for we're looking for our y-intercept and if you can remember when we looked at the equation for the parabola if you can recall that the Q value was the y-intercept so in this case we can just take our Q value over here which is positive 9 we can say Q is equal to 9 cool once we found that we can go to our graph and we can in the meantime just put that in over there cool so that would be 9 and then after that what we can do is we can look at finding the x-intercepts Cool. so how are we going to do that I'm just going to indicate we are finding the x-intercepts so remember if we try and find the x-intercept in any equation we are going to make the y equal 0 cool so we're just going to move it over to the right hand side over here and we're going to rewrite our equation over here with y equaling 0 so we'll have 0 is equal to negative x squared plus 9 obviously we don't want to work with a negative x so what we can do is we can just times this whole side by negative and then our values will change so we'll be left with positive x squared minus 9 so all that's left for us to do now is to obviously solve for x and how we can do that is by factorizing so it's very important that we remember our laws of factorization right or our different types of factorization in this case we can see straight away that this is dots right we have two perfect squares here separated by a negative sign so let's go ahead 
and do our factorization. So we split it x and x. We know we have plus and minus. And then what is the square root of 9? It is 3. Cool. And just like that, we can take it down from here. These values are going to be x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to positive 3. And so what we do is just plot these two points now onto our graph. Obviously, it will be represented as negative 3 and 0 and 0 and positive 3. So we'll put that down here. Because it's on the axis, we don't necessarily have to write in the coordinates. So this is going to be negative 3 over there and this is going to be positive 3. Just identify with them that this is negative 3 on the graph and positive 3. Once we've done that, we can draw in our parabola. Making sure that we go through all of our points. We will... It's a bit harder for me to do it. So I'm just going to do it there. And our two arrows showing that the parabola goes on infinitely. And just like that, we have plotted our parabola using the intercept method. Now let's have a look at some examples that we can do. So the first thing we want to do here by number one is look at the equation. So we have y is equal to 5x should be 5x squared. Sorry, that's my bad. So we're looking at y is equal to 5x squared. So because we don't have a q, we know that the most ideal method is to use the table method. So let's just throw up our table quickly. Okay, now that we have our table drawn in, only thing left for us to do is to find the y values. Remember, we're using our negative 1, 0, and positive 1 you know, as our x values. Cool. So, what's going to happen is we're going to substitute x values in. So, 5, and we'll substitute in the negative 1 squared. So, negative 1 squared is going to give me positive 1, times by 5 gives me positive 5. Then we are doing 0 into the equation. So, if we plug 0 in, we know that our answer is going to be 0. So once again, we can already see this graph is passing through the origin. And then we have positive 1 going in. 1 squared gives me 1 times 5 gives me 5. Cool. So there we have our values. So we can just write out the coordinates that we're going to be plotting. That's negative 1 and 5, 0 and 0, and positive 1 and 5. If we just throw those in, we have 1 on the origin. We have one at negative 1 and 5, which is probably somewhere up here. And positive 1 and 5, which is somewhere up there. Obviously, when you're drawing a parabola and your Cartesian plane, you'll have all of your values with the lines and negative 1, negative 2. So yours will be more accurate than this. So now let's connect our dots. We're going to go through all of our dots over here. And once that's done, don't forget that we need to identify our coordinates. So this is going to be 1 and 5 over here. This is obviously the origin which is 0 and 0. And then we have negative 1 and 5. And just like that we've used the table method once again to plot a parabola. Moving on to the right hand side we can see we have the equation y is equal to x squared minus 4. So straight away we can see we'll probably be using the intercept method. So once again, we can say that to find the y-intercept, remember that q is our y-intercept, and q in this case is negative 4. So q is equal to negative 4. So we can put that in over here by negative 4. Just identify that that is negative 4 on the graph. And then we'll use our intercept method make finding the x-intercept. And the way we do that is we make y equal to 0. So once y equals 0, the equation looks like 0 is equal to x squared minus 4. Once again, we'll factorize. So x and x plus minus square root of 4 is 2. Cool. And once we get there, we can just say that x is going to be equal to negative 2 or x is going to be equal to positive 2. Obviously, we know these coordinates are negative 2 and 0, and 2 and 0. So those are obviously on the x-axis. So there will be 2 over there, 
negative 2 this side and positive 2 this side. Once again we'll draw in our parabola and connect our dots. As you can see I am an artiste. And we have our parabola using the intercept method. Moving on now, we have another example. Y is equal to negative, six, negative x squared sorry, plus 16. So we'll be using the intercept method once again. We know our y-intercept is represented by q. q in this case is equal to 16. So it will probably be way up on the graph. Remember, it's not to scale on my screen. So there we have 16 over there on the y-axis. Remember, q is on the y-axis. Now we'll find out x-intercepts by making y equal 0. So the equation will look like y is equal to negative x squared plus 16. Remember we've got negative x, we don't want it to be negative, so we change it to positive by timesing the whole side by negative. So we get x squared minus 16. From there we can just factorize x and x plus minus square root of 16 is 4 and so our points we are plotting is the negative 4 on the x-axis and positive 4 on the x-axis which will be around here negative 4 positive 4 connect our dots just like that showing our arrows as well which shows that the probability is infinite and that is y is equal to negative x squared plus 16 plotted on our Cartesian plane. Now by number 4 we can see that this equation looks a bit funny we have a fraction included the equation reads y is equal to a third x squared minus 3. So the first thing we want to do is it's a bit difficult for us to work with fractions so what we want to try and do first is get rid of the fraction and because it is a third 1 over 3 we know to get rid of this fraction we have to times the fraction by 3 but you can't just times that fraction by 3 you need to times everything here by 3 so how that ends up looking is timesing a third by 3 and 3 negative 3 by 3 the equation looks now like y is equal to x squared because that perfectly cancels out the fraction over there x squared minus 9. From there we can just follow on with the method as we usually would using the intercept method. So we're finding the y-intercept first represented by q. q in this case is negative 9. So we go ahead and we find negative 9 in our graph somewhere over here and we plot it. Now we'll find our x-intercepts next. So to find that, y has to equal to 0. So once we make y equal 0, we get x squared minus 9. We're going to do our factorization once again. x and x plus minus the square root of 9, which is 3. So that means that our first bracket is going to be equal to negative 3 and the second one is equal to positive 3 which is somewhere over here on our graph. So minus 3 plus 3 then we go ahead and we connect our dots really squiggly line apologies and then back up again. You have to try and make your parabola look as symmetrical as possible. Okay, so that concludes the fourth example and also today's lesson on plotting our parabola. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you again in the next one.